Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, the U.S. Air Force shows off images of the B-21 bomber. The Singapore Air Show is hampered by the coronavirus, and House NASA authorization bill could threaten the Artemis program. Welcome, I'm Sophie Herlock. The Air Force has authorized the release of artist renderings of a stealthy B-21 Raider concept in hangars at a number of Air Force bases. These images show some of the differences that are already becoming evident between the previous B-2 flying wing concept and the next generation B-21 Raider. The U.S. Air Force designated the Next Generation Bomber as the Raider in honor of the legendary Doolittle Raiders. The next generation of stealth technology is being developed in response to upgrades in radar and air defense weapons developed and deployed by Russia and China that allow stealth aircraft to be detected with greater accuracy. The U.S. Air Force awarded the Next Generation contract to Northrop Grumman five years ago, estimating the value at $21.4 billion. Currently, the program is said to be worth $55 billion over the entire program life. We'll be right back with the rest of the news. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. It's time for today's trip around the patch. Even though SpaceX's launch of another 60 satellites to support Starlink global internet service was successful, the first stage landing on board the Recover barge was not quite as smooth. Pictures of the recovered first stage show the landing legs and shock absorption mechanisms were highly compressed, indicating the landing had more touchdown velocity than hoped for. Inspection of the vehicle and the normal refurbishment process will reveal if this thrice-flown booster is ready for another trip. The Wings over Dalton, Georgia air show has been canceled due to lack of ticket sales. The air show was scheduled for May and had only sold around 158 tickets when they needed to sell 11,000 to break even. In a statement posted to Facebook, JLC Air Show Management said, After a careful and thorough review of historical trends and advanced ticket sales for similar air shows, we have made the decision to withdraw participation from the Wings over Dalton, Georgia air show. Airbus helicopters tallied up to 38 orders at Heli Expo 2020, as well as 20 retrofit orders for the new 5 Vleda H145. German air rescue and ambulance provider DRF Luff Retton placed an order for 15 H145s, making them the largest operator of that aircraft. Customs and Border Protection will add 16 new H125 helicopters to their fleet, with deliveries beginning later this year from Airbus Production Facility in Columbus, Mississippi. After more than 16 years studying the universe in infrared light, the mission of NASA's Spitzer Space Telescope has come to an end. At about 5.30 Eastern Time last Thursday, the spacecraft was placed in safe mode, ceasing all scientific operation. After the decommissioning was confirmed, Spitzer project manager Joseph Hunt declared the mission had officially ended. Spitzer was launched in 2003. We'll be right back with the rest of the news. Many are canceling their plans to attend this year's Singapore Air Show due to threat of exposure to the coronavirus. However, the Air Show stated the show will go on as planned from February 11th through the 16th, with additional precautionary measures added to safeguard the health and well-being of each attendee. 
The air show, which is held every other year, and is Asia's largest air show, has become a pivotal place for leading aerospace companies and growing operations to see and be seen. The International Civil Aviation Organization and Bombardier have already canceled, and the Singapore Air Show Aviation Leadership Summit has been halted as well. ICO President Salvatore Sacatano, FAA Administrator Steve Dixon, and IATA Director General Alexander Day Juniak were scheduled to speak at the summit. Singapore has also denied entry to all Chinese visitors and foreigners with recent history of travel to China. Boeing, Airbus, and Lockheed Martin are still planning on attending the air show. The House Science Committee released H.R. 5666. The NASA authorization bill, which would alter NASA's current plans to return humans to the surface of the moon by 2024, as part of the Artemis program and would instead make them part of an effort to orbit Mars. With this bill, astronauts would begin making short visits to the moon in 2028, with the goal of sending a crewed mission to orbit Mars by 2033. H.R. 5666 proposes a human landing system, saying plans for a moon mission should use the Orion vehicle and an integrated lunar landing system, carried on an exploration upper stage enhanced space launch system for the human lunar landing missions. While such a system has only been proposed by Boeing, NASA's Artemis program also includes commercial space players like SpaceX, Blue Origin, and Lockheed Martin. NASA has encouraged competition for contracts and placed an emphasis on fixed price contracts to lower costs. And that wraps up our show for today. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and check us out on Twitter and on Facebook. For more aviation and aerospace news any time of the day, head over to aero-news.net. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.